If enhancing your health and athletic performance is a priority, try listening to The Plant-Based Athlete on Audible. From groundbreaking research to insights from professional plant-powered athletes and more than 60 recipes, this audiobook can help you reach new fitness goals. Audible delivers bestsellers, new releases, plus loads of included podcasts, originals, and audiobooks that you can listen to all you want. Start a free 30-day trial at audible.com. Here's to getting back together, to planned lunches and unplanned cookouts, to grandma's recipes and smells that take us back, to passing down plates and traditions. Here's to warm embraces and familiar faces, to your best friends becoming best friends, to scheming, dreaming, and food still steaming. Here's to laughter and love, to growing closer than ever, for all of life's get-togethers. Chinette, here's to us. The following is a hoop bowl presentation. Welcome to the Fantasy NBA Today podcast. And we're off and running Tuesday, September the 21st. Count up continues towards the start of the NBA season now just 28 days away October the 19th a Tuesday set your clocks thanks for listening everybody welcome to fantasy NBA today a hoop ball presentation I'm your host Dan Bespris hope you guys uh, were able to tune in to uh, the nine cat roto mock draft I did with Josh Lloyd last night it's on his YouTube channel if you haven't checked it out yet we did it while announcing it live that's actually really hard i hadn't done that before which i feel like there's this assumption that if you're a, a nba fantasy podcaster or broadcaster of any kind that you've sort of done all these things and i'm sure josh has done a handful of them but even he said it during the the thing it's really hard because you can't prep your next pick your whole time in between is spent talking about everybody else's picks and then you're like you're coming up you're two away and uh, because of me, Josh was kind enough to set the timer at only 45 seconds in that mock last night because I needed to be out about an hour, hour 15 after we started. And uh, do I put my kids to bed? Because So we were Zooming. And I actually think I came out with a pretty good team. So go do check that out. Thanks again to Josh for having me on. Uh, I think he and I are going to be doing a couple more things here together before the season starts. And this, by the way, is kind of a segue into the other stuff we're talking about, which is... We're going to be talking to a lot of people, a lot of people over the next couple of weeks. Uh, Weekly chats with our buddy Aaron Bruski. Tomorrow, we'll be talking to Adam King, our hoop ball buddy, Adam King. There was a pretty goodly clamoring for a follow-up episode. Remember, we talked to Adam on this pod a few weeks back. We did a, a traditional mailbag show, and... Twitter and forums and so forth were kind of like, hey, you guys need to do a follow-up on the punt discussion you started to have. So that's happening tomorrow, or we'll be airing it tomorrow. The recording actually will be happening almost probably while you're listening to this show. So that's coming up. Uh, Adam has a tweet out right now. If you sneak in a question to it, we might be able to get to that on the show. I don't know exactly how far we're going to get in the questions because to me, every punt question leads to a follow-up. There's almost no end point to that discussion because there's so many ways to play fantasy. And with head-to-head, there are advantages to punting. It's not as cut and dry as it is with Roto. You really don't want to do that in your draft in a Roto league. You want to be good at everything. You need to amass points in every category. In head-to-head, you don't. You need to win five out of nine in the playoffs. Anywho, along with that, The other names in the mock draft that I've been putting together, Mike Barner, Adam Stock, Dr. A, we already talked about Josh, Zach Hanshu, Alex Rickling, Matt Smith, Matt Straup, uh, Matt Lawson, (laughs) stocking up on the Matt Jonas Nader, Mike Catron. It is uh, a veritable who's who of fantasy analysts. It's not everybody. It's not everybody. It's only 12-team league, so we couldn't get everybody, but it's a whole hell of a lot. And I wanted to make sure we got folks that were outside of hoop ball for this mock draft because we already know what everybody inside hoop ball is doing. Now it's time to get thoughts from outside. 
So this, I think, is going to be a lot of fun. I hope you guys are excited about the next few weeks as I am. Give me a follow on Twitter if you haven't already. My uh, handle is at Dan Vesper. It's just my name, D-A-N-B-E-S-B-R-I-S. Everything that I do, everything that we do at HoopBall, I try to make sure it gets funneled through social media. It's a terrific starting point. Uh, anything that's going on at HoopBall, I try to make sure that it gets retweeted there. There, of course, available are HoopBall Overlords at HoopBall Fantasy on Twitter. That's the handle over there. Draft Guide is available now at HoopBall. Has been for almost a month now. But I, again, we've done a, a, just a piss-poor job of letting folks know about it. So please do check that out. That's at hoop-ball.com. Click on the Premium tab and get yourself rolling that way. On yesterday's podcast, we began our discussion of Yahoo ADP data, and partway through, I realized that what we've done in seasons past maybe isn't the most indicative of how things are going. Because, first of all, ADP data shifts on a day-to-day basis. Jimmy Butler, remember, when we did yesterday's show, was 25.1. He's 24.8 today. That's in one day, his ADP shifted by a third of a point. This is why breaking all of this stuff down super early, which, look, I know we're only 28 days from the start of the season, but most people don't do their fantasy drafts a month in advance. Most fantasy drafts happen within two weeks of the start of the season. And we do this every year. We break down ADP data a month in advance, and we look for these potential value spots. But by the time you get to your draft, they're gone. Which is why I thought yesterday's discussion was a bit more illuminating, even if there were points where we were kind of jumping around from thought to thought. The main idea was compare ADP information to Yahoo's projections, which, by the way, those also change, but not nearly as much. There's a handful of guys that move around. Most of the stuff they leave, I don't say completely untouched, but largely unchanged, but for a few things here and there. And that allows us to see which direction ADPs are probably going to move. So the homework that you may recall from yesterday's podcast was go figure out some interesting names where ADP data and Yahoo pre-rank data are not in agreement, and then we could talk about it. Sports is about peak performance, and Audible has ways to enhance yours. Check out the end of this episode for more details. So I want to do this in two parts. Part one is the very easy, quick part. Part one is, I want you guys to go to social media, and I want you guys to tell me what you found. Before we even do the rest of this episode, I want you to pause it, flip on your Twitter, because that's what I pay attention to, and otherwise you're not really going to get me all that fast, and send me a tweet, at Dan Vespris, with your findings. I hope some of you actually did the homework assignment from yesterday. I was serious. I don't want to do this by myself. That's boring. That's boring. There are thousands of you guys listening to this podcast, so I'm hoping at least a handful of you took me seriously on yesterday's show. Tell me what you found. And this show will be out, obviously, so the rest of the episode will also be out. So it's not like I can go back and reassess things. But I want you guys to send me that stuff. Your findings, your homework, whatever you want to call it. Before you listen to the other parts of this podcast. Not so much because I feel like you need to to be surprised or something like that. But I want you to start working on this from a learning, the learning side of the equation. I want you to start, and that's what the whole bucket process was a few weeks ago, learning not only how to make your own list, because I think we all handicap things a little bit differently. I invest more in a games played element than a lot of other handicappers and analysts out there. Maybe you don't. I believe certain totals, players, and head-to-head, those guys have whatever. We don't need to get into that strategy today. Whatever list you're operating from, my list, Bruce list, again, I would always suggest the B150 there, we worked together to place those guys into buckets based on where we believe they will be drafted. Well, now we have some of that ADP data. It's not going to be perfect. The later we can assess our buckets, the better. Point is, it's not about surprise. It's about you guys understanding the process and being able to do it 
to some degree, yourself. Obviously, I still want you guys to listen to the show. We subsist on downloads in the podcast universe. But I want you guys becoming sharper as you listen. I don't want you guys to just hear the answer to the question. I want you guys to understand how to get to the answer of the question. I want you to start to feel like you can do it yourself. And the podcast becomes validation, maybe, more than anything else. An opportunity to give you guys a second perspective beyond what you're able to put together. So as you were going through the list, whatever it happened to be, whether you wanted to start... I Personally, I think it's easier to start on the ADP side and then go back the other way. But I don't know that that's necessarily set in stone either. What were some of the most interesting ADP pieces of information you found. Not the biggest misses, you believe, because if we were doing that, we already did that, really, with the pre-ranks. Like, we found Clint Capella at 46, still two rounds off of what he did last year. That's a miss, probably. We don't know. Season hasn't happened yet. He could get hurt and miss 25 games. His ADP is 41. So there isn't a big gap between his pre-rank and his ADP, which, unless there's a massive analyst push, tells you that his ADP probably isn't going to move that much. Let me read off some of the names. Not that I think we're the biggest, uh, the gap names, but remember yesterday we got as far as Jimmy Butler, and up at the beginning, it's hard to find those big gap names, but I actually thought Butler was one of the really big ones. Uh... Jimmy Butler, remember, had a a pre-rank on Yahoo of 16, and his ADP was outside 25, which, again, is only nine spots. But if he moves towards that 16, suddenly he's no longer a guy you can get towards the end of the second round. It totally changes what happens if you have a top four pick in the first round who you're eyeballing when it comes back in the second. So from the names we've already mentioned... On this show, I think Jimmy Butler is probably your most interesting early gap player. The pre-rank to ADP gap guy. On the other side of that equation, LeBron James is a really big pre-rank to gap guy. His pre-rank is 26. His ADP currently is 12.7 and probably falling. Which means that if you were game planning around LeBron going in front of you and you know you've a pick like 14 or 15 or something like that and you're thinking, okay, somebody's going to take LeBron and Bradley Beal is going to fall to me or whoever, that might not be so obvious two weeks from now if Bron's ADP falls back towards the middle to the end of the second round instead of the beginning. So those are probably the big gap guys from the early chunk. Let me read you some names. We're going to go... You know, Ace Ventura, deep breath style here. The next 25 names on the ADP board are, and I am really going to do the whole Ray Finkel bit, LaMelo Ball, Rudy Gobert, Freddie Van Fleet, Donovan Mitchell, Devin Booker, DeAndre Aiden, Chris Paul, Shea Gilgis, Alexander, Chris Middleton, Kawhi Leonard, Christian Wood, Michael Porter Jr., John Morant, Jalen Brown, Clint Capella, Brandon Ingram, Miles Turner, De'Aaron Fox, Tobias Harris, John Collins, Drew Holiday, Jonas Valanciunas, Chris Tapps, Persingas, Malcolm Brogdon, CJ McCollum, Rashawn Holmes, and one hell of a model American. I love that movie. I don't care if you think less of me. Ace Ventura was comedic brilliance. I think the, uh, I think one of the, I think the writer of that movie, I think his daughter went to my high school. (laughs) I should have been her friend. Damn it. Oh, well. Come on, Mr. Shikadance. That was brilliant. Ventura. I heard animals in there. Anyway, uh, So I just said a whole bunch of names really fast, and I wasn't really paying attention to them because I was more focused on pronouncing their names properly while not running out of air. These names, as you heard them, did anything jump out as extraordinarily interesting to you guys? I'll tell you one that I thought was interesting. Freddie Van Vliet, ADP of 28, pre-rank of 19. He ain't going at 28 when you have your draft. He's probably not going at 28 now. Because Yahoo's projections are better 
than the early ADP data on Freddie Van Fleet. He's going to go in the second round. It's happening. It's already happening. Understand that if you are game planning... uh, By the way, this again, don't do your buckets yet because these ADP things are on the move. Unless you're drafting tomorrow, I guess. But even then, I think it's really about where the shift is occurring. Other names that jumped out as kind of an interesting spot for them. Forget Kawhi Leonard, because he's just going to slowly move off the board as people realize he's not playing this season. Uh, Michael Porter Jr. at 38.5 was a pretty interesting one when you consider his Yahoo projection is 22. He was in the 40s in ADP when these numbers first came out. That ain't staying at 30, 38.2 anymore. This, by the way, is an argument right now, at least, for why you should be building your own list against the Yahoo projections as opposed to ADP information because it's kind of faulty at the moment. It's kind of faulty. So I think Michael Porter Jr. is one of the really big gap guys that you're going to see on the move. This is part of the process. I want to pause picking names, if only for a moment here, because we'll keep doing it. We'll find a few more names. The pause this time is to understand why we're doing this part of the process. And not every one of these pieces has to occur in a one thing per day setup the way that we do it on the podcast. I had someone, and I have no idea if he was insulting me or complimenting me, saying that no one can turn six minutes of content into 35 minutes quite like Dan Vespers. That actually is kind of a compliment where I come from. That's the magic of baseball play-by-play. Had to turn like 26 minutes of action into a a three-and-a-half-hour game. I think it's really important And hopefully that's why you guys listen to this show. Yes, I am wordy. Yes, I am flowery in the way that I describe things on the show. But I want to go hyper in depth, understanding the why. Not, Not just the answer, the why. Why do we do these things? Why are we even looking at ADP data right now? Why is it even important? Why are we why are we just looking at Yahoo's pre-ranks? Well, the reason we need to look at both is because some of the guys have an ADP that's close to the pre-rank but not right on it. Those guys are probably going to stay pretty much where they are. Some of these guys that are really far away, the guys we're talking about right now, these are things you can game plan for later in the process. This is how we stay in front of the hype machine. Using this comparison, ADP to Yahoo projections, we are already able to isolate almost all of the hype guys on the board. Is that crazy or what? Our goal in this time frame on the podcast, basically from about six weeks before the season starts until the day of your individual fantasy draft, our goal is to figure out the exact order that players are going to go off the board in your individual fantasy league on the day of your specific draft. This is part of how we do it. We have spent copious amounts of time trying to figure out at each little juncture what everybody else is going to do this is the way you do it now we have to insert the caveat that in your specific draft people are going to go off script it's going to happen and a guy that you're targeting at at a particular spot simply might not be there that's okay You're not going to have one plan for how everything is going to shake out on your draft night. Once you know the near exact order of the players in your draft and where they're going to go, it's going to take a lot of screwball stuff to mess up your plan. So I pivot back to this, the discussion at hand here. Why are we looking at this ADP to projection combination platter? The reason we're looking is because we can then start to tell you where guys are actually going to go. 
because they don't go exactly where the Yahoo pre-ranks are, and they don't go exactly where the ADP data suggests that they'll go. But you can start to really localize players based on where they started and the trend line. ADP data generally approaches the projection data, but doesn't get all the way there. We put that in with the analyst ranks. Whoever, you know, Brewski has high on his list. Roto World has high on their list, whatever. And then suddenly we know where everybody's going in the draft. I hope you guys actually did send me some of the big... I mean, you know, I can't know because I didn't put out half this show before and half this show later. Uh, I hope you guys did send me some of this stuff. Uh, mid, mid-show mid reminder to please subscribe to the podcast if you're new to the show. And please drop a five-star review on it if you're enjoying the podcast. It's very, very important to us, especially this time of year. The more people that are downloading the show, hitting the subscribe button, and writing a five-star review, it, it exponential raise for us. We just shoot up the boards, and then everybody else can find us. So we need those kind of hot episodes, and I need your guys' help doing that podcast app if that's what you're using on your mobile device search for fantasy nba today click on the show title and scroll to the bottom and if you're on a computer just boot up itunes also same thing go to the podcast tab search for fantasy nba today you don't have to scroll to the bottom once you click on the show page it should be a tab sort of a sub tab that's ratings and reviews so please do help us with that i will be forever grateful Before we dive into the next 50 names on the Yahoo ADP, who had sort of the big gap, I didn't come up with a fun name for this segment of the show. Whoops. There was news today on the NBA front. I kind of buried the lead a little bit there. Uh, Ben Simmons has informed the Sixers he will not report to training camp. So he is officially gone. And now the question is, when does he end up on another team? And which team is it? I believe that... I believe he does get traded before the season starts. Neither one of these... Neither one of the sides, Simmons or the Sixers, want to go into the season with this stuff hanging over the team. That's a, that's a dark, looming cloud that can mess up how a team is functioning it can screw with uh the feeling in the locker room although i guess having him there would probably screw with the feeling in the locker room even more and then what are they going to get oh you know we don't know what offers are on the table but him saying he's not going to play certainly diminishes his value a little bit because now every other team knows look the sixers are going to get nothing out of this dude so they're going to want to move him faster Will it be the Kings? The Rockets appear to be a team that's kind of at the forefront of this discussion. That speeds up Houston's timeline on being a better ball club, although they're still going to be terrible. He would make them... There's, there is no combination of players that Houston could send back to Philadelphia where getting Ben Simmons would make them worse. The Rockets are awful. Young, inefficient, and awful, that team. So they would be wise to try to do what they can but they haven't even really gotten into the full rebuild yet. I know they got their young guy, and so it's sort of front end of the rebuild stuff. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see. You're not drafting Ben Simmons anywhere right now. And there weren't that many guys in the Rockets you were thinking about taking anyway. But this is, by the way, is another reason to draft late in fantasy season. You might invest in a uh, Jay Sean Tate or a Kenyon Martin Jr., or something on that Rockets team. We just talked about them with Brew on, on last Friday's show, and they may be on the move to become a backup in Philadelphia. There's a fantasy shakeup in the works. But for the time being, the only thing that we really need to do, because if you, if you do happen to have your draft early, the only thing you can really worry about is just not drafting Ben Simmons right now. We don't know if he's going to be playing anywhere before the season starts. One would assume that he is traded before opening day, but it's, it's a month away. Anything can happen. This could trickle into the season a few weeks, a month, more. Do not draft Ben Simmons until we get any kind of clarity on this situation. Other names on Yahoo's next 50 and the ADP board that are sort of all over the place where uh, we kind of need to be... Uh, uh, 
cognizant of the the gap again and it's you'd almost think that it'd be more there'd be more names at this point but it's actually it's actually less which is why I thought it was so important that we focused on some of the earlier stuff um because once you get into this part of the draft Yahoo's projections do tend to skew what people are doing even more so. Because a lot of folks don't have a strong opinion between, you know, Marcus Smart and Mike Conley or something like that. So they're going to probably default to whatever the Yahoo board is telling them one guy should necessarily be in front of the other. This is why I really wanted you guys to to do some digging with me on this. Because I think it's probably kind of cool for you to see these types of phenomena. The fact that as you get later in the draft, Yahoo's projections basically are the ADP. They come together at this point. If you're looking for giant gap dudes, there just aren't that many. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Uh, the one that jumps out to me, at least if we're going to like grab it a couple, Jakob Pertl. Projected 79, ADP currently of 105, so that's a guy who's probably going to start going a little bit earlier. But then you get into the ADPs of like 120 to 130, and it's all a total wash. None of that means anything. Really doesn't. A lot of these guys have ADP data that's basically in lockstep with their Yahoo projections. I mean, you can find little ones. Buddy Heald, uh, projected 92 ADP in the, like, around 80. So he probably maybe drops back a little bit, but also maybe not. Clay Thompson going in the mid-70s. Uh, you shouldn't be drafting him at all. His projection is at 115, playing in 44 ball games. So that's probably one that I would assume falls back. Although then there are keeper leagues where, you know, a guy like that might get picked up and then just squatted on. So that he'll probably always go a little bit earlier than his projection because there are leagues where you can hang on to him season over season. That's just a little bit of a footnote on an overall strategic side of this game. Enough stringing this segment out, I think is probably what most of you guys are thinking at this point. Let's focus on the main point. The main point is that while you guys were doing your homework... What I'm hoping you came across was that there are basically the same number of big gap ADP to projection guys in the top, like, 40 as there are in, like, the next 100. Because early on, everybody's got their strong opinions. Everybody has a strong opinion on LeBron James. Everybody has a strong opinion on Kyrie Irving. Everybody's got a strong opinion on Luka and Giannis. Although, to be fair, those guys ended up right where Yahoo had them projected anyway. Right? Think about if you were talking basketball with your friends. Think about the the less diehardy people you know in fantasy basketball. They've got pretty strong feelings on Joel Embiid. They've got pretty strong feelings on... Crap, who else did we talk about? Maybe not Freddie Van Fleet. He's not a, a pure household name. Michael Porter Jr. Braun, Trey, all of these guys. They have strong feelings on these dudes. So if Yahoo puts out a projection, the initial drafting might not perfectly parallel that. It will likely move toward it as people start to look at the draft board and that's where the names turn up. But at the very beginning of drafts, first 20, 30, 40 picks, whatever, those are all your household name fantasy players. That's where people all want to go get their guy. ADP data doesn't match preseason data. You know what? At the end of the year, idea just hit my head in the middle of the podcast. At the end of the year, we always do the whole, like, compare the end season rankings to the, the projections from Yahoo and see how they fared with their stuff. This, I think at least in terms of getting ourselves ready for draft day, what we learned by comparing projections to end-of-season rank is basically to say, look, there is a point in the draft at which Yahoo's projections are completely worthless, 
And that point last year, the COVID season was like 40. Most seasons, it's like 65. Meaning, after pick 65, the board doesn't do anything for you. There's an order. The players are listed in a particular order, but they might as well be alphabetical at that point. What this data tells us, that ADP and projection numbers don't parallel one another, is who the public has a strong opinion on. And I, use, I should pick my words a bit more carefully, not necessarily the public, because these, these are early drafters, so a little bit more diehard, but who the uh, players of fantasy basketball have strong opinions on. You know who they don't? You know who players don't have a strong opinion of? Some guy ranked around 95. Kyle Anderson. Players don't have a strong opinion of slow-mo, of where he should go. I don't actually know what his ADP is. I don't know. It's probably just a hair behind where he's getting drafted, if I had to guess. Somewhere in there. Where the hell are you, Kyle? Yeah, ADP of 104, uh, preseason rank of 95. Sure, nine slots there? Nothing. You know the gap between players at that range. It means nothing. Nine spaces for Jimmy Butler at the beginning, though? Somebody using a second rounder versus a third rounder on it? That is colossal difference in opinion between the players and the site. At least at the beginning here. Why is that important? We need to keep asking the question, why? I want you guys to really get in the habit of asking why after we figure something out or after we make a statement. Why? Why is it important that we know who the players have strong opinions of? Two reasons, maybe more actually. Reason number one, players are going to be harder to change their minds on guys like that. It's going to be harder for players to have their minds changed when they're set in stone and have a strong opinion of a particular player. Two, we can use the information of ADP shifts to know how much Yahoo's projections are impacting the strong feelings of these players. Three, we can figure out who the hype train guys are, particularly guys who move through Yahoo's projection and then beyond it. By the way, you know what you do with those guys? You avoid the crap out of them. Why do we care about all those things? Why? I ask again. Because with every piece of information we put into our bucket, sorry, no buckets, this is a bucket-free episode. With every piece of information we put into our brains, we come closer to being able to predict the order of a fantasy draft. And the closer we get to knowing the order of the fantasy draft, the easier it is to just cakewalk through it and come out with a team where you're just like, yep, that's mine. I want to also mention one other thing here uh, as we get towards the end of the, the main points of today's episode. And then there is one more big one that was sort of on my mind because I did these mock drafts. I'm working on the mock draft myself, the, the expert mock that I've got going on right now. Uh, the one I did with Josh last night, which was live and very fast. If you come out of your mock draft and your first thought is, oh, my team is so exciting. I don't think that that's necessarily a good thing. I want you guys to try something this season. It doesn't have to be in every one of your leagues. But I want you guys to try drafting in the, in the true Dan Bespers fashion, basically, which is like, don't, don't get caught up in any of the hype. Full curmudgeon. I come out of so many of my drafts thinking, hmm, hmm, like not at all exciting basketball team. In fact, listen to the, uh, the team that I put together in, in Josh's mock last night and i make sure i gotta get the the order of the draft picks right my result uh josh was kind enough to give me third pick was steph somehow fell to me at three which was a uh a coup rudy gobert at 22 chris paul at 27 john collins at 46 cj mccollum at 51 terry rosier at 70 chris boucher at 75 buddy healed 94 kelly olenic 99 Nerlens Noel, 118, 
Mo Bamba, 123, Lowry Markin in 142, Nick Batum, 147, and Davis Bertans at 166. First of all, I have a lot of centers or center eligible guys on this team. Gobert, Collins, Boucher, Olinick, Noel, Bamba, Markinen, and Bertans. Eight of my 14 guys are center eligible, although only Gobert and Bamba of those are exclusively center eligible. Every other one, the other six guys are also power forwards as well. I came out of this draft actually, like, at least by the t- around my eighth or ninth pick, I was looking at this draft like, hmm, let's think about those names again. Steph, obviously, that's a great one. If you get Steph, especially if you don't have to use a second pick on him, then terrific. Rudy Gobert, hmm. Chris Paul, hmm. John Collins, hmm. McCollum, hmm. Rozier, yeah, that's fine. Chris Boucher, there's a little bit of a, a shot there. Buddy Heald, meh. Here's the thing, though. If you come out of your draft thinking meh on a lot of spots, it probably means that you got a lot of quiet, producing, durable guys. I want us all this season to strive for an okay draft. I want you guys to, set, to, to adjust your target. Everybody wants to come out of their draft with like the team that makes them so excited to be playing fantasy basketball. I want all of us to come out of the draft this year with the team that just seems like they will quietly win ball games all season long. Who the hell would that have been last year? Utah? Utah just kept winning games last season, and nobody cared. I want us all to build our Utah Jazz fantasy team. Not actually with real Utah Jazz players, although I did get Gobert in this particular instance, and I think he'll be about a value this season. But think about it from this perspective. Steph Curry at three. He'll, he'll be a, a mid to top first rounder. Okay, that's fine. We don't have to worry about the first round guy. Rudy Gobert at 22. Do we think he's a second rounder this year or better? Yeah, I do. I do. Chris Paul, third rounder or better? Yeah, I think he's a second rounder. I mean, Rudy Gobert, m- must I, need I remind all of you guys, looking at last season, Rudy was number seven. And I know you can't live in the past, but my top three picks in this in this draft, last season by totals, Two, seven, and five. Those three guys. Steph was two. Gobert was seven. Paul was five. I don't think Chris Paul is going to get into the first round against. I think he's going to miss a few more games. But Gobert was seven. Mid-first rounder on a per-game basis last year. Or on a totals basis, excuse me. Uh, Per game, he was 21. I took him at 22. Okay. Is there a ton of value on the per-game side? Not really. But I expect him to play more than league average games, which means an ADP win. John Collins at 46. This is the same phenomenon. He was 47 per game basis last year. Played in 63 games. He was actually better than that by totals. The list goes on and on. I want us all to focus this year on a perfectly acceptable draft. This is, by the way, how we feel when you execute the Bespris method through the first five rounds. Steph, Gobert, CP3, John Collins, CJ McCollum. Chris Paul, I would argue, is maybe the biggest risk in those five because he went to the finals and had wrist surgery this offseason. And frankly, I'm not targeting him in the late 20s. I think if I did this draft all over again, I might go Michael Porter Jr. there. Just knowing who was still on the board later, I didn't end up having to go with any other point guards. But I figured, screw it. I had Steph Curry, Chris Paul in the top three. That puts me in really good shape for assists. Because uh, Steph is pretty good, and then Chris Paul is quite good in that category. So I just sort of knocked it out. But look, Chris Paul's going four or five spots later than that. You could probably get him mid-third round. If he plays a league average number of games this year, he beats that mark. You remember, he's number 18 per game last year, and then number five by totals because of the crazy durability. We don't even need the durability if he goes number 18 per game again, which... Why wouldn't he? 16 and a half points, nine assists, 1.4 steals. This is extraordinarily repeatable for him. Kind of want to talk more about the results of that mock draft, but that's not really the point of this episode. Uh, If you guys want me to talk more about that mock draft, let me know on Twitter. That's fine also. But please do, I hope, pause this show at some point and let me know some of the uh, gap guys you found that we can find as either the risers or fallers and make some predictions on that front as we head towards our each our uh, own individual fantasy drafts. 
Tomorrow, Adam King, we're talking punt strategies for head-to-head folks. You guys, I'm sure, are sick of hearing me talk about Roto. Well, guess what? You get a break tomorrow with Adam. Uh, can't wait to bring that show to you. I am Dan Bespris at Dan Bespris on Twitter. Hit me up if you want to join a hoop ball league also, or if you want to be in our laundry list of amazing recruits here for hoop-ball.com. Again, that's at Dan Bespris on Twitter. Rate and review the pod. Have a great Tuesday. I'll talk to you all tomorrow. So long, everybody. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.